Hello, my friends. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about jQuery event methods. Now, event methods are used to create further manipulation of the DOM by attaching a function to an event handler. Now, that probably sounded too jargony. So why don't we speak in normal human language? A user interacts with the browser by clicking or hovering over something, and those are called events jQuery can recognize an event and then do something with it. So for example, I'm going to show you here, I created an events.html page here. It's very basic. Go ahead and pause the video and copy this out or just pull it straight from the, the course files folder that you downloaded at the beginning of this section because uh, there's no need for you to be messing around with HTML. This is all about jQuery. So here we have some HTML here. Make sure you got this right stuff. You got the box and you the form with the element. And, and then I have some CSS in there that I've added as well at the bottom. Again, just copy from the downloads folder because this is not the CSS section. Anyway, now in our script.js, uh, JS, I'm going to show you, uh, just a kind of a few examples here. So this, what I'm going to code here is called the click method and it attaches a click event to the ID of box. So here we selected box and then click. That is called the click method. This code standalone won't do anything because you're just attaching a click event. Uh, so it's when you add a function to the click event that something cool can happen. So let me show you. In here we would write function, then open closing parentheses, open curly brace, couple returns, closing curly brace. That's the syntax right there. That's where the magic can happen. And then in here, it's where you can do something. So I'm just going to say alert, pull the alert uh, function there. You just clicked the box and make sure that is in strings. Save that and just check it out in your browser here. So here we have the little test page. If I click the box, I get an alert that says you just clicked the box. Great. So that's, that's how you would do the click event method and then perform something within the function. So it's in the function that you can manipulate the DOM, change CSS, update text, add and, remo add and remove elements on the fly, and that's what makes jQuery so cool. There are a bunch of event methods, some of which you'll use regularly with every website, and some of which you may never realize existed until you teach a course about jQuery and actually read through the jQuery documentation for the first time. Did I say that out loud? Now the entire list can be found at w3schools.com and api.jquery.com and I'll attach those to a uh, to the lecture here as a resource uh, but but we'll we'll go through a few more of the most common event methods here in this lecture in the meantime. So let me show you here this is another one and it's called the blur method. So the blur method looks like this. I'm just going to put input and then blur. So it attaches a function to the blur event. So the blur event is when an element loses its focus. So when an input in this case loses its focus, that's what um, more specifically would have the blur event. You can't really blur off of a div, uh, but you can blur out of an input because when you click in an input like so, that's called focus. And when you click out, that's called blur. So just so you know, so when you blur out of an input, um, it basically means it loses its focus. And so this blur recognizes that event and then you could do something with that. So this example that I'll code here would recognize the blur event, check to see if the input is empty, then tell the user that they forgot to enter text in the input. Silly user. So this is how you do that function again. There's your syntax. So you got your blur function and here is where we're going to do some magic. And this, it's, this is going to be just a little bit more advanced just to show you the power of it. So we're going to do an if statement. So in here, we're going to check to see if, so this, this is the, this selector. Basically, uh, instead of putting an element in here, like uh, an input or a div or an ID or a class, um, you can actually just say this without a string. And it basically just means what you're actually uh, already working within. So the input is when you blur the input, it's going to check this, meaning this thing right here, the input. 
So you don't have to re uh, define the input. And, and specifically, you wouldn't want to do that because if I were to say input here and check to see if the input is empty, then it's going to check to see if all inputs are empty and that's going to cause some major issues. We want to see if this specific input is empty. So any input, when you blur out of any input, attach the blur event method. And then in here, we're going to check to see if this specific input, the value, so dot val, like so, is equal to empty string. So this checks if this specific input is empty, then do this stuff in here. So more jQuery. So we're going to say this dot CSS. So we're changing just the specific um, element. We're going to say border solid one pixel red. And we'll also select the box and say text. We're going to change the text to forgot to add text, question mark. And then that would be it. So now, basically, we're going to blur out of an input. It's going to check to see if the value is empty. And if so, it's going to give a border to that input to indicate that, hey, you missed something. And the box is going to give you some feedback with the text. So check it out. So here we have our website or web page. I'm going to focus in. Nothing happens yet. Now I'm going to focus out. Forgot to add text. Red border. Pretty neat, hey? So that is how you would use the blur event method. Now, another example we can use to remove the border if the user finally enters text into the input is called, uh, well, we can use, there's a few different ones, but the one of them is called the key down method. And it attaches a function to when the user presses a key down within an input. And so that looks like this. So we're going to select that input again. We're going to say key down. And here we do the function again. Same deal. And in here is where we're going to do some magic. If, so we got our if statement. We're going to check this again. This val is not equal to empty. So this means it's no longer equal to an empty string. Then do this the following. This dot CSS border solid one pixel red, or sorry, not red, uh, we'll say 777, and we'll change the text in the box to something else that indicates you uh, entered text. Thanks for that. Okay, now let's check it out. I'm gonna save that, refresh. So here we go, we're gonna click in, or focus, and then blur. Forgot to add text, red border. Whoops, yep, I did. Let's start entering text. Thanks for that. And it is now a gray border. If I were to remove it, blur, same deal. Forgot to add text. Thanks for that. See? So just like kind of some validation. It's something that you can actually use today on one of your websites. If you have a form or something like that, you want people to be able to enter text. Uh, and if they have the, the form is empty, you want to give them feedback to say, hey, you forgot something. And so that is how you would uh, you would use those specific uh, event methods. Another very popular event method is the hover. Uh, it's the most popular in my experience because I find it incredibly useful. Basically, the hover method is attached to a hover event, and then you can perform a function. Again, like so. So I'll show you another example. We got. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna select that box, and we're gonna hover. Again, we need a function because just a hover alone is not gonna give us anything good. So we got hover. And all we're going to do now is just say this text. And we're just going to change the text inside the box. You hovered. Save that. Let's give it a check see. Hover inside. You hovered. There we go. Now, the cool thing about hover methods is that it attaches two event handlers, a hover in and a hover out. If you only use one, like in this case, just the single hover event method, then it just performs the function you ask of it uh, once. It combines both of them and it just does the one thing. But you can specify what they do in both specific events by simply adding another function to this hover event method. And all you need to do is after this curly brace, after this first function, give it a little space, comma right after it, and then function again. 
open and closing parentheses, open curly brace, couple of returns, closing curly brace. So you can see here we have the first function. This is the hover in. And then comma, second function. That's the hover out. And then we could just make it do things in those specific cases. So we'll say you hovered in and you hovered out. Save that. Let's check it out. You hovered in, you hovered out. You hovered in, out, in, out, in, out. Blah, 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 blah. See? Pretty cool. Anyway, those are just a few of the most common event methods. And like I said, there are many of them. And you can give them a look-see and test them out uh, at uh, W3Schools and jQuery.com. And I do encourage you to do that. You can go through here and just kind of give them a little look and click click them and check them out, read, read up on them if you want to do that. Um, and in my experience, basically, I just start coding. Now, I don't know all the event methods by heart, but I'll be coding a site and then I'll come across a scenario where I'll think, hmm, it'd actually be really cool if this thing could do that when the user performs this. Then I'll do a quick search uh, within the jQuery docs to find out if there's a method for that. And more often than not, it turns out to be the case. So Googling is your friend. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next lecture.